everyone. My name's Sam. I'm Angie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today, I'm Angie. I have hat to show I'm Angie. Because none of my paintings are turning out. This is my new sketchbook. None of my paintings have been looking good today. I was so frustrated. We got this one. We got this one. This one. Yeah, I don't know. It looks too blurry. This one's my favorite, which isn't saying much because it's it's like so patchy. We got tomatoes. From memory, you know, I don't know what tomatoes look like. I don't I don't remember the last time I looked at a tomato. Whatever this is, this drawn by a child. This also drawn by a child. This one I actually tried. It's okay. Enough with the hat. This one looks good actually. It's like hay bales and there's some mountains. But I used reference for this one. It looks kind of bad. Anyways, that's it for the sketchbook so far. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some paintings in this video. I'm putting the hat back on. I've been having a lot of trouble with mixing colors. I only have primary cyan, primary magenta, primary yellow, and burnt umber. And black and white, of course. I'm having a lot of trouble with values because in my head, the primary colors all have the same value. Which is probably not accurate. I was talking to my friend and she said that yellow has a different value than magenta and cyan. But I don't see it. They all look the same to me. They all look like they have the same value. And values, if you don't know, are like the darkness and lightness of... It's probably a horrible way of explaining. But the darkness and lightness of a color. So black has a very dark value. It, it is just a value. It's not a color. And white is the lightest value there is, I believe. Uh, it has no color. But something like red has like red pigment and a certain amount of white and a certain amount of black to give it value. I am Playboy. I think it's more fun when I have my face in the videos. But maybe you guys don't want to see it, which is fair. <laughs> My boyfriend's looking at me. <laughs> Cutie. Well, you're seeing it anyways. I don't care. I don't caring. Reminded of the SpongeBob thing where he's like, I've got the ugly! Like the ugliness is spreading. My ugliness is spreading to you guys. It's not gonna be my face the whole time. I also have painting to do. Hmm. Hmm. Let's get started. All right, so I got my palette, my sketchbook, the colors, my water is on the side. Um, let's see. I am about 11 pages into the sketchbook. Um, oh yeah, shoot, I don't have a reference picture. You know what? I'm gonna make it up. I'm, I'm going- I'm going in raw. <laughs> what should I paint? You know what? No, we're getting the reference picture. I'm not going in raw. Always use protection, okay? I found a nice picture. Um, I'm just gonna sketch it out. I never sketch out my drawings first, but I thought I'd give it a try. That'll go because I need something to try and that's new because my paintings have been going very poorly. I think that's too high up. There's like some grass. And this goes like this. There's more grass. Just like a simple sketch, like you don't need anything crazy. I think I'm gonna do an underpainting for this. You could find all my references on my Pinterest also. It's also my NK, so. Ah. 
that. And like that. And this. There's three windows. Hey, that's not bad. I always put my colors in the same spots just so I don't get confused. I use the Amsterdam paints, like as you can see here. I found that they're good. I don't know what other acrylic paints are like because I don't think I've ever really used other kinds. But I heard that this is a student grade paint, so maybe they're not the best or the most light fast. I don't know. Maybe they are. They, they're fine for me and I'm just having these in my sketchbook. I was thinking maybe I could make prints out of these because my friend showed interest. So I thought maybe other people would show interest. And I do have a scanner back in Ontario. So we'll see when I go back in April. All right, we got all our colors. I'm gonna go in with my biggest brush and I'm gonna grab some of the red and a little bit, well, it's magenta, but anyways, it's a very vibrant pink actually. I'm not really used to making this much vibrant colors. I'm really bad at making vibrant colors. But anyways, um, with a lot of water, I'm gonna go in and make that underpainting. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm doing this on my bed. Probably not the best place to do it because I got paint all over my sheets and all over my... Oh, I got blue. Dang it. I gotta wash my brush. I'm gonna be more careful with washing my brushes. New Year's resolution, actually wash your brushes. Oh yeah, it's all over my sheets and all over my blanket and the blanket's not mine. So that's not good. Belongs to my landlord, I think. There. I think that's good enough. Now we are going to mix indigo for the sky. I'm so bad at mixing colors. I was literally telling everyone today, I'm like, I feel like I'm colorblind. Like no offense to people who are actually colorblind, but I just, I don't know. I hope I can learn to be better with values. I think this sketch is helping. News to everyone, do a sketch first. Obviously, but this is my first time. Okay, we're gonna ignore the sky for now to let it dry. And I'm gonna do the bottom, like this area. And it's basically blue with a tiny bit of black I think why does this not look right you know what it's fine because some people they're like oh let me just put in the chunks down first and then do the values which might be a good idea so let me try that Let's pretend that's what I was planning all along. Oh shoot, I might have messed up. There's like supposed to be yellow here. Okay, let me switch to a smaller brush. I'm gonna make the bottom corner a bit darker just to give it a little bit of a gradient. I think I need a bigger brush because this hasn't been doing it for me. Even my biggest brush is only a size 6. Alright, I'm gonna go back into the sky. Make it a bit less patchy. Now I'll go for the yellow. Like, this area is supposed to be yellow. It's 
This is supposed to be the shadow. I don't know of what. But I'm just copying the picture, guys. Add some blue to make it a tiny bit brownish. Be a little bit more. It's like a golden yellow I'm looking for. I think that's good. Red into my orange mixture. There's some super neon looking green. So I'm just going to clean my brush. You know what, actually I'm gonna get a smaller brush. And get some yellow. That's a nice green. I think the underpainting is really helping me. Because it set the tone for the values. And without it, I would be very lost. I think I gotta go back to the yellow. Right here. I don't know how I feel about it right now. It was looking good and then I ruined something. Hmm. Maybe I need to put more blue. Okay, I gotta stop with that side because it's getting kind of out of hand. Let's do this side. So the green is quite dark. The grass on this side is in shade. And then down here is purple again, but I think it's like a lighter purple or like a more reddish purple. Oh, that's too bright. Yeah, that's perfect. I want to add some purple to the sky. So I'm going to do that. Oops, it's all good. And I'm actually gonna add some black to this so that I can go over this part of the house, which is dark bluish purple. Yeah, that's a good color. The top of the house is green. Quite a bright green. I'm gonna use the yellow I already have here and some blue. I'm gonna continue with the grass actually on the right. Some more yellow. My brush is packed with juices. Still trying to fix this side, something seems off with it. Up here is like orange too, so I'm gonna take some of that orange again. Put it up here. I do think there's something wrong with this green, so I'm gonna mix another green all together and just Add it there. Oh, 
put some brown in there. These colors are a bit less patchy. Also goes in the windows it looks like. And then the side of the house, the chimney is red. I don't know how I feel about this painting right now. I'm a little bit discouraged. Because nothing I've painted today has really turned out. And this doesn't look like it's going to turn out either. It's fine. I'll paint something else. It's just, you know, I wish it did turn out. I think I ruined it over here. I'm going to add more. I think that looks nice to add a little bit more of a saturated green to the edges of the yellow so that it looks like you can tell it's like the shadow or some water or something. I don't know. <sighs> and then there's some red down here, so I'm gonna add that. Okay, I do like the purple, or sorry, the pinkish tones added to the sky. I think it's looking really good. And anyways, back to the chimney. It is literally super bright red, so I'm just gonna add straight up red. Ugh. Okay, straight up red. That's good, it looks vibrant. That means I'm doing okay with the values. Sometimes if your values don't look accurate, then that might mean that you've used too vibrant of colors throughout the piece. So when you do use the like regular magenta or cyan, then it doesn't pop. As you can see here that I've, I've done dry brushing, which is not the exact look I wanted for this. I'm gonna try to fix that. Put her around them. I feel like I'm going over the same spots again and again. It's almost like insanity. Trying to get the edges a bit more crisp. And why not add some more pink little clouds? I'm gonna take the tape off. I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? I think it's better than my other paintings in this sketchbook. So once this dries, I'm gonna move on to the next image. As I found another vibrant image to paint so I can practice painting vibrant scenes. And then after that, then I'm probably going to end the video. So it's just two paintings today. I like to tape off the borders because it gives it a more finished look when I take off the tape. As opposed to like potentially getting tape on the sides, which I kind of already did, but oh well. So I'm going to do the underpainting again because I feel like it went super well last time, honestly. Okay, so again, taking my red and some white and mixing a vibrant pink. Maybe even more vibrant than that. It's like a bubblegum pink. That'd be awesome if I had a bigger brush. Maybe- ah, I got black in here. It's whatever. It's just traditional costs so much money. Like, to buy brushes, to buy paints. That's good enough for the underpainting. Maybe I should have done blue because this image is actually a lot more blue than it is pink. But it's fine. 
Okay, so the sky is a muted blue. So I'm gonna grab blue, of course. I'm gonna grab white. And I'm gonna grab some red, tiny bit of red. Just to dull it out. I think I need some more white. I hope when I get a lamp, you guys can see a lot better. Oh shoot, I forgot to do the sketch. Bruh. Bottom is like purple, but super pale purple. Blue. So I'm gonna do that and then add some white. Some more blue. And it's very streaky. Not dry brushy, but streaky. And then I'll do green. Now I'm gonna go back in with the sky. I love that acrylic dries so fast, honestly. And then we got a lot of black, actually. I'm gonna go for the building before I actually- I keep saying I'm gonna do something and then switch to something else. But this time actually I'm gonna do the building in the middle. Um, so this- it's like this. Let me just sketch it out with my brush. Like this. Okay, you guys don't want to know what I just did. I basically messed it up with my finger. Probably not what I should have been doing. But down here it's really muddy. Not exactly what I wanted. Going in for purple. So taking these colors, mixing it with my white. I really don't know how to get that color. Oh, I got it. Ha ha ha. Okay, that's gray essentially. Whoops. And this side is like lemon yellow white ish. Okay, now we need a very pale blue. for shadow okay now I'm gonna go back in for the sky take some brown actually just mute it a bit ooh that's a lot of brown actually that's not bad yeah that's a good color back the window. There we go guys, I think it's basically done. Um, I like this one actually. 
When you squint, it looks good. <laughs> it's okay. Taking the tape off. Best part, honestly. Ta da! It looks like it's like a rainy day or something. There's like puddles in the grass and the clouds are foggy. Well guys, thank you for watching. Let me show again the paintings that we did today. It's like a little house on a hill. This one's just a house. I like this one. Wow, 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 wow. Nice.